hello guys welcome to smart education hope you have enjoyed the first session if you haven't watched it yet please check the link above let's get back to section 2 in this video we are going to learn about decimal place value as the name it's related to regular place value in the previous video we learned how to count using just 10 digits number place that represent different size groups if we needed to count 235 apples we use different number places for counting by ones by group of 10 and group of hundreds digit 2 in the hundreds place represent two hundreds three in the tens place represent three tens and five in the ones place represent five ones it's a pretty amazing system if you think about it it only has 10 digits but those 10 digits can be reused in different combination to count any number from zero all the way to trillions of apples and be but as amazing as it there is just one little problem with our number system so far if you don't have a whole apple in the place value video we only learned how to count whole amounts or what we call whole numbers which is a set of numbers you get if you start with zero and then count by one two three four and so on but there are things besides whole amounts it's possible to have just part of something like just part of an apple and that means there are in between amount you might have one apple or two apples you could also have something in between that like one and a half apple how can the base 10 number system handle situations like this the answer is decimal places Decimal places are a way to extend the base 10 number system so that it can represent amounts that are in between whole amounts. Decimal places are just like regular number place except that instead of using them to count groups, we use them to count parts or fraction of something. See how the base 10 number system is extended with the decimal places. Let's look at the pattern of number place that we saw in the last video. We started out with a number place for counting things one at a time. And when we hit the limit of counting with it, we use another number place for counting group of 10. By combining those two number places, we could count from 0 all the way up to 99. But when we needed to count beyond that, we used another number place for counting group of 100. And when those places were maxed out, we added a place for counting by groups of 1000 and then groups of 10,000 and so on. See the pattern. Each time we added a new number place, it was located to the left of the previous one and each time it represented groups that are 10 times larger than the previous group. Since the amount that our number place represent get bigger and bigger as we go to the left, it makes sense that the number place for counting smaller amounts will need to go to the right side of the ones place that were the decimal places are found and just like the whole number place can go on forever to the left counting bigger and bigger groups the decimal number place can go forever to the right counting smaller and smaller parts but if number places go on forever in either direction then how do we know which place is which I mean if they all look the same or worse if they are invisible then how do we know which digit go in which place ha huh, that's an excellent question we do have a problem right now that the number place can extend in both direction before when we had only whole number places that extended in just one direction that is to the left we knew that the place that are furthest to the right was always the ones place. 
but now we know that number places can extend in both directions so we need a new way to tell which place is which what we need is a point of reference a place that we always start from and for that we use a special symbol called decimal point basically the decimal point acts as a separator it separates the number places that are used for counting whole number from the number place that are used for counting fractional value and that's why you don't see a decimal point in every number if there is no decimal point in a number like in the whole number 25 then you don't need to show the decimal point it's safe to assume that the digit furthest to the right in the ones place of course you could still show the decimal point if you want to since it's always immediately to the right of the ones place but if there is no decimal place then we don't need to separate from the whole number digits if a number does have decimal digit then we call it as a decimal number the decimal point help us quickly understand which digit is in ones place for example if you see a sequence of digits like 126.53 you can tell right away that the digit 6 is in ones place because it's immediately to the left of the decimal point that means 2 is in tens place and ones is in hundreds place okay but what about the digits that are right of the decimal point we know that they must be decimal places but what are the names of those decimal places and what value do they count Looking back to our number place pattern, we see that each time we move to the left, the new number place count amount that are ten times bigger than the previous number place. So each time we move to the right, the number place should count amount that are ten times smaller than the previous number place. Since ones place count by ones, the number place to the right should count ten times smaller than the one. The amount that 10 times smaller than the one is called a tenth it's a amount you get if you take one whole like one apple and divide it into 10 equal parts keeping just one of them one tenth is what we called a fraction and fraction are written using a special notation that has two numbers with a line in between them and the number on the bottom tells us how many equal parts a whole number is divided into and top number tells you how many of those parts you have so the fraction 1/10th is written like this 1 over 10 getting back to our apple counting example previously we count one whole apple but now that we have number place for counting tens we can count tens of apples too we can use ones place and tens place together to count amounts that are in between a whole number of apples to see how it's work let's start our counting with one whole apple and no tens that means there will be one in ones place and zero in the tens place but now let's start adding tens to that for each tens that we count we increase the digit in the tens place by 1 1 tens 2 tens 3 tens 4 5 etc let's pause for a second to notice something important do you see that having 5 tenth of an apple is same as having 1 half of an apple that's because 5 is exactly half of 10 and fraction 5 over 10 can be simplified to 1 over 2 that's why having 1.5 apples is same as having one half of an apple pretty cool huh anyway back to counting 6 tens 7 tens 8 tens and 9 tens we have one whole apple and also 9 tens of an apple but our tens place is maxed out with the digit 9 that's as high as it can count so what do you think will happen if we add one more tenth those 10 ten tenths combine to form one whole apple 
and that will cause a ones place digit to increase to two. Now we have two whole apples. Even though one is made up from slice, the amount is still equal to one whole. But wait, there is more. More decimal places that is. The tens place allow us to count in between the ones. But what if we want to count amounts that are in between tens? Decimal place keep on going to the right. And each time they count amounts that are 10 times smaller than the previous amount. So if the tens place count fractions that are tenth of one, the next place over will count amounts that are one tenth of a tenth. One tenth of a tenth is called one hundredth. Is the fraction you get if you take a tenth and then divided it into ten equal parts. It's a very small fraction and it's called a hundredth. Because it's the same fraction you will get if you take a whole apple and divide it into hundred parts. Its fractions form look like this one over hundred. Like Tens could be used to represent amounts that are in between ones. Hundreds can be used to represent amounts that are in between tens. Just like if you combine ten tens, they equals one. If you combine ten hundreds, they equals a tenth. The decimal number place keep on going like that. The next number place over represent fractions that are one tenth of one hundredth. That very small fraction is called 1000 because it would take 1000 of them to make one whole. Next number place is 10 times smaller than that. It's called 10 thousandths place. Then there is 100 thousandths place. Then millions place and so on. So do you see how amazing our number system is? It can represent any whole number amount no matter how big by adding bigger and bigger number places to the left but it can also represent amount in between those whole numbers with more and more precision down to the tiniest fraction imaginable by adding more and more decimal number places to the right this is truly amazing isn't it okay so now you know that how decimal places work let's talk briefly about how we can show their place value and how we can write decimal number in expanded form. Digit value is determined by the place that it is in. So, if 2 is in tens place, it stands for 2 tenths, which can be written in fraction form like 2 over 10. If 3 is in tens place, it stands for 3 tenths or 3 over 10. If 4 is in tens place, it stands for 4 tens or 4 over 10 and so on. And just like 2 is in tens place, stands for 2 tens. 2 in hundreds place stands for 2 hundreds. And 2 is in thousands place stands for 2 thousands and so on. And that will help us writing decimal number in expanded form like that one we saw in earlier 126.52 expanded form of whole number party cc we learned how to do that in the last video 126 is 100 plus 20 plus 6 now we need to add the fraction represented by the decimal digits to since there is 5 in tens place that stands for 5 tenths so we need to add the fraction 5 over 10 to our expanded form but we also have digit 3 in hundreds place which stands for 3 hundreds so we also needed to add fraction 3 over 100 to our expanded form thank you all we have loved the session have a great day